In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I earned a full ride division one football scholarship in the SEC at just five foot seven inches. Young Richie's not a real intimidating from a size standpoint at five seven and 163. I'm also gonna share with you all of the mistakes that I made and what I would do differently today after working with thousands of athletes all over the country. Because I made a lot of mistakes and I don't want you to make the same. And this video is for you if you're a parent or you're an athlete and you're not in the 0.1% of athletes, you don't have bazillion offers in front of you and you really wanna know exactly what you should do step-by-step step to earn a college athletic scholarship. If you don't know who I am, my name is Richie Contratesi. I'm the founder of Next Play, and we help underdog athletes earn college football scholarships. And I make these videos because I understand the struggle firsthand. At just 5'7", 150 pounds, I managed to secure a football scholarship in the SEC at Ole Miss. And now I wanna share that journey with you so you can live your dream as well. Also, I have a gift for everyone who stays till the end because you probably are like me and serious about playing college football and I want to reward you for that. So let's jump right in. Unfortunately, I stopped growing at 5'7", 150 pounds and everybody around me during this time was telling me that there's no way I'm going to play college football. I had no shot, but there was something deep down inside of me, this delusional quality that was like, Richie, you can do this. These guys aren't that much bigger than you. They're not much more talented than you. And they really were, but there's this weird, delusion inside that was like, no, you can 100% do this. And during my sophomore year, I made a decision that changed everything for me. I played quarterback and we were a brand new school and no one really knew anybody. And the head coach in our first practice said, ones go out onto the field. And so I ran out onto the field and took the starting position. And looking back, that really changed everything for me. This was one of the things that I did really well looking back and I teach athletes to this day. When it's the start of practice, when you're just getting the ball rolling and the coach has not named starters and they say, run out onto the field, Field, go ones, you've got to go run out onto the field. You want to be the one that they have to kick off the field. Don't be the one that just stands on the sidelines to kind of wait and see what happens. Trust me, I made a lot of mistakes, but this wasn't one of them. With that being said, at 5'7", I didn't really have a good year. We actually ended up going 0-10. This was my sophomore year on varsity, and I didn't play well. A new quarterback transferred in that spring, and pretty much for the whole spring, I was on the sidelines. I didn't play very very much and I was really frustrated. I was really down and I was really mad but I had no choice, I had to pivot. So I ended up moving to wide receiver. As a kid, if you've read my book, I spent so much time running around, catching passes with my buddy Zach, and I had really good hands. I wasn't the fastest, I obviously wasn't the biggest, but I had really good hands. So I ended up moving to wide receiver, and again, this was another really good decision. Going into my junior year, I had really good stats for Palm Beach County, which is loaded and stacked with tons of athletes and really good players, but I was up there amongst the best of them. And going into my senior year, I still didn't have any offers and I made a big mistake by not reaching out to schools, by not marketing myself. I thought that I just had to kind of sit back and play really well and eventually somebody would reach out and offer me. And that never happened. And going into my senior year, I started out the season really well and I was really excited. However, I ended up breaking my ankle. I did get a lot of letters from D3 schools, some D2 schools, even some 1AA schools and NAI schools, but none of them were very serious and I didn't respond to any of those letters. And this was a huge mistake. If you're getting letters in the mail, always respond, always complete their questionnaire. This is going to give you the best chance to get scholarships, get aid, and have lots of options. I always share with athletes the hardest scholarship to get is the first one. So if you're getting letters in the mail, complete those questionnaires, take those coaches up on those visits, and make sure you're really focused on the entire recruiting process. So in my senior year, I broke my ankle and I was sidelined for pretty 
pretty much most of the season. Any opportunities that I had at that point completely went out the window, which wasn't really many to begin with. My head coach and just probably like your head coach just doesn't have the time to do with a lot of the recruiting. Yes, he sent out our roster and he sent out tapes, but really what can he do? He's also a teacher. He's got to make sure that we're winning games and he's got 25 other seniors. So he did his best and he was able to get me one meeting at Florida International University, which was about an hour from where I lived. And I got into my car, drove all the way to FIU, walked into the secretary's office and waited for this coach that I was supposed to be meeting with. And I waited and I waited and I waited. And finally, the secretary said that the coach wasn't going to be able to make it. And I found out later that the coach actually saw me walk in and decided that he didn't want to take the meeting anymore. So my head coach, he absolutely did his best. But in all of reality, I didn't do the things I was supposed to do. Mistake number one, I wasn't posting on social media as much as I should have been. Mistake number two, I wasn't reaching out to coaches on social media. I wasn't reaching out to coaches via email or phone calls, I was waiting for them to come to me. I also had profiles on some of these sites. You probably know some of them like NCSA and people just expect that coaches are going to come to you if you create a profile. But I promise you D2, D1AA, Division I, NAI coaches that have scholarships have so many people reaching out to them and they're not going to just sit there and they have practice and they have to keep their coaches happy and their players happy. They're not going to just sit around and sort through all of these websites you have to go out and get it. With all of that said, I ended up getting a phone call from a coach at a school named Jacksonville University. It is a division one AA school, but it's non-scholarship. So it's basically the same thing as a division three. And they offered me an official visit. I went up there, it was disgusting. The locker room was horrible. Their game field didn't even have bleachers. It was pretty much embarrassing. And this football program is so bad that it literally doesn't even exist anymore. So it was the the only opportunity that I had besides a D3 school up in Ohio, you might have heard of it, Mount Union, which I did take a visit to, but I wasn't going to go all the way to Ohio. This was one AA. It really was D3, but because I didn't do a good job and I didn't have a strategy and I didn't create a game plan, I went into this blind and I made a bunch of bad decisions. So I ended up going to Jacksonville University. I ended up having to come out of pocket to pay for it. And on top of that, I was redshirted. After my first year, the coach that brought me in was was fired and they brought in a new head coach and he called me into his office after looking at this 5'7", 150 pound frame and cut me without even really giving me a chance to show this coach what I could do. And I was at a crossroads at this point. I could quit and throw in the towel and give up on my dream. And I'll never forget my dad have a conversation with me and he always had this motto of focusing on your next play that we learned from a little league coach that I had. And I was frustrated and I was down and he said to me, what's the most important play? And of course that was the next play. And so this lesson I lived by my entire life, whether it was on the field, it was off the field, something didn't go my way. I was down, I was sad. He always helped me determine what my next play was. And because of that, I was always able to move forward. And so this time I actually did outreach and I started reaching out to all the division one schools. I created a spreadsheet of all the recruiting coordinators, position coaches, all their phone numbers, and I just started calling down that list. And the first question they would ask me was, what is your height and weight? And I would tell them, and that would pretty much be the end of the call. And so I kept calling, kept calling. And eventually I ended up finding out that a coach that I had had in Little League had an internship at the University of Mississippi, better known as Ole Miss, and reach out to him and said, hey, is there any way that I could play at Ole Miss? And he said, without any hesitation, if there's one person that I would help to get a tryout, it was you. Now, while he was helping me get this tryout, I continued to call schools and was able to drum up another few opportunities, but this was by far the best one. It was in the SEC, and so I took it. Now, another big mistake I made here, if I look back, is I probably should have taken one of the opportunities that I had in the Big 12. And the reason being is when I was playing, the Big 12 was was much more spread. It was really good for slot receivers, which was the position I played. And the SEC was still more pro. Now today, the SEC would have been great. Ole Miss would have been perfect, but a few years back, probably 
would have been better in the Big 12. So for you, what position do you play? What conferences are best for your style? Whether it's Division II, 1AA, AA, Division I, have a game plan. Understand whether you're on defense or offense, what type of offense or what type of defense fits your skill set. And find conferences and teams that you'll thrive and you'll have success in. You don't have to play in the SEC, although that's what I wanted to do, but you don't have to. That was another big mistake that I made and hopefully you can learn from it. So I had my trial at Ole Miss. My coach ended up getting me one one hour tryout and I was so ecstatic. I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. And I was just cut from Jacksonville. I had to unenroll from Jacksonville, enroll from Ole Miss. And I was in South Florida. I packed my car with everything that I could and I drove all the way up to Oxford, Mississippi. The only person I knew in the state was this one coach that I had had. And all I had was this one one hour tryout. And I remember walking up to the indoor practice facility and driving down Manning Way and just saying to myself, this is absolutely amazing. This is beautiful. And this is exactly what I dreamt about when I was a kid. And when I sat on the floor and I started putting on my cleats, my heart was pounding out of my chest. And there were guys like Michael Orr from the blind side and Mike receiver, Mike Wallace and Dexter McCluster and Eli Manning was there and walking by and I'm scared out of my mind. and. I didn't fit in and I had this one one hour tryout, but it was always next play. And I stood up and I did this tryout to the best of my ability. And after the tryout, I'm waiting for my phone to ring. It finally rings and the coach calls me. So because you're committed and you stayed through this video, I promised you I'd give you a gift. And so I'd love to give you a free copy of my book, In Spite of the Odds, where I share my entire journey in detail, everything I learned and steps that you can take to earn a scholarship today as well. Now, it took me about two years to write this. I poured my heart and soul in this book for athletes just like you who want to play college football but don't know how. This is the book that I would have wanted to read when I was your age. So if you want a free copy, click the link below. All I ask is that you just cover shipping. Now back to the story. And he says, do you want the good news first or the bad news? And I said, give me the bad news, get it over with. He says, you didn't make the team. And I was like, you better give me that good news right now. He goes, you didn't make the team, but the coaches decided they're going to give you a one week tryout to prove that you could take these hits that you're about to take on this practice squad. And so I was like, all right. So next day, walked into the locker room. Everyone had a plated locker, but me and a little piece of tape with my name written on it and some oversized pads. And I'm sitting in my locker and I'm like, this is my shot. This is it. Next play, walked through that tunnel out onto the field and I just did the trial. And at the end, Coach Ogeron, who was also recently the coach of LSU and won a national championship, was the head coach at the time. And he put his arms around me after that week. And he said, he named me Relentless Richie. And he says, you got a spot on this team. And he goes, the reason you got a spot on this team is because you pissed my defense alignment off. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, because you made them work hard. And then throughout that whole year, I built this reputation as this hard-nosed hitter, this guy never quit, dirtiest uniform on the field. Unfortunately, at the end of the season, Coach Ogeron got fired. So a new coach came in, we had our first team meeting, I walked up to this team meeting and I literally was not even on the team anymore. So they didn't even have my name on the list. So I had to do everything I did the first year all over again in the second year. And for the next three years, every Thursday after practice, they used to post this travel squad. And that was the goal. Like if you could get on the travel squad for the games, then you would have a chance. And for three years, my name was not on the list. And here was another big mistake I made during that three years, I didn't push my coaches enough. I didn't go to the special teams coach and say, what do I need to do to start this year? What do I need to play on special teams? I didn't meet with him every single week and ask him, what do I need to do to get better today? What do I need to do to start? And these are the things that you should be doing, especially if you're in high school, because when college coaches reach out to your coach and they say you come and meet with them every week or every day and ask them what you need to do to get better, and then you go and do that thing and show them that you've done that and you continue to get better and you show them that you're trying, then the coach is more likely to give you a scholarship. Same thing in college. I should have been meeting with my coach every day in the off season every week, asking him what I should do to get better, going and doing that thing and showing him that I did it. And I kind of just left things up in the air, just like I did in high school. It was a huge mistake and I don't want you to make that one as well. So you should be meeting with your coach every day during the season and every week in the off season. However, 
finally, during my senior year, the special teams coach came to me, again, a huge mistake, and this was because I had really good hands and our holder had graduated and he asked me if I would want to be the holder. And I said, absolutely, I'd love to be the holder. So I started working with the kickers and solidified myself as the holder. The good news is this is my shot to get on the travel squad. The bad news is I was really trying to work my way up the depth chart as a receiver. And going into my senior year, I had worked my way all the way up to seven. And you really needed to be in the top six to play in the games. And I was really trying to break into that sixth spot. But unfortunately, my receivers coach came up to me and said that the special teams coach didn't want me playing receiver because he didn't want me getting hurt as the holder. So I had spent all this time trying to get on special teams just to find out that I wasn't able to play receiver because I was on special teams. Regardless, I continued to push forward at receiver and try to get better. And over that summer, I was in the head coach's office every single day and this is one thing I did right and I was asking my head coach what do I need to do to play what do I need to do to play what do I need to do to play I finally learned my lesson by doing this and he would tell me and then I would go and do it and there were some days I'd walk up the stairs to go to this office and the door was locked and I'm pretty sure he was in there <laughs> but eventually at the end of the summer I had continued to work so hard and I solidified myself not only as the holder but also in the rotation as a receiver Right before the season started, we had one final scrimmage and I was walking through the tunnel out onto the field and there's a bright blue sky. There were fans in the stands and I could just smell the grass. It was a warm day. And as I was warming up, I got a tap on my shoulder. And when I turned around, it was the head coach. And when I looked at him in his eyes, all I could think about were all my friends that told me it was impossible, that you were never gonna play. I thought about all the players that would laugh at me, all the coaches that would laugh at me. I thought about my fifth grade teacher when I failed fifth grade who told me that I would never be worth anything. He looked in my eyes though and he said, Richie, you've literally given me no choice. You're now on scholarship, congratulations. The best thing I did my senior year, and I'd love for you to take away from this, is I gave the coach no choice. Not only was I in his office, I did everything he told me to do. I never missed a practice. I was there early, I was there late, and eventually earned a college football scholarship in the SEC. Now, I did it the hardest way possible, and I'd love for you to do it out of high school and not have to go through everything that I went through. But I ended up going on to win the SEC Scholarship Athlete Award. I played in all games my senior year. I had SEC catches at Tennessee and Arkansas. And although I never ended up being a full-time starter, I was in the rotation. I got to play in games. I got to run out of the tunnel at LSU and Alabama and Auburn and live this childhood dream. And I'd love for you to be able to do the same. So I hope this story inspired you and some of the lessons that I shared will help you on your journey as well. Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you enjoyed this video and like to see more videos just like this. I'll see you on the next one.